Hey guys, it's May May, and this weekend, this photo of this cereal box hat came across my Facebook feed, so I had to look into the video of it and see how it was done, and it made me think, we can make a treat box with no glue closure out of that hack, so let me show you what we're gonna do. So I've taken a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and my bone folder, and we're gonna do some scoring. So the first score you're gonna make is at one and three fourths, I'm using all of this um, cardstock. I want to make it as big as I could today. Then we're going to score it at five and three fourths. Then at seven and one half. And then 11 and one half. Now, don't worry about measurements and the stuff I'm using. I'll have that in the blog post link for you guys below. Now, I'm just going to turn this one time, okay, into the scoreboard. And I need to score it at one and three fourths. And at 10 and one fourth. So let me get that in there good, 10 and 1 fourth. And that's all the scoring we need to do. So real quick while I'm thinking of it, I know you're gonna to wanna to see this in six by six and also in eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna work on bringing you those tutorials as well. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. All right, so let's talk about the first things first and that is folding. So what you wanna do now is fold on all your score lines, okay? And here's what I want you to do when you're folding. Don't just trust the score line, all right? Sometimes the score lines can be a little off. So what I want you to do is line your score line up with your score line underneath and even line the edges of your paper up. And then if you have to train the paper, you have to move it a little bit. I'd rather you do that than have a crooked score. All right, so that's good. Let's crease that down. Perfect. All right, let's keep going. Let's do the next one. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And what I typically do is find my score mark that's kind of it. And now I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to make sure that my score lines match up and the edge of my paper matches up before I do the pressing and putting that score line in place. So there's that one. Now let's do the next one. Let's do it this way for you guys to see it better. So I'm lining up score lines and also the edge of the paper before I do any pressing. That'll help you get a much straighter, squarer, or rectangular <laughs> box. All right, one more. I'm just doing this little guy, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna line up my score line, line up the edge before I crease, just to help me get it straighter. All right, and then we just have a couple here and at the bottom, at the top and the bottom. So line those score lines up, and then crease. And then at the bottom. Now we have to do a little fancy footwork to this. Not too awful much, but I want you to see what I got to do. So either wait here if you're making this with me and let me kind of do this um, work for you. Or watch through all the way before you start doing it. All right, get yourself some scissors. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to cut every single slit at the bottom of the page. All right. But here's what I want to do. This piece and this piece, which are the two bigger pieces. These are my four inch scores. I'm gonna be cutting the score line off of those. So that means I'm not cutting in the ditch, I'm cutting the score line away. So where my score line is, I want to cut that off, okay? Not too deep in, I just wanted to get that off of there. Now what I wanna do is on this little flat we made, I wanna make an angled cut. It does not have to be any precise measurement. I just wanna show you what I did. See how I made that angled cut? That helps us when we go to close our box to not have any bulk. So again, I'm gonna cut the score line away on the big flap. We're technically cutting it away altogether because when we do our little angle cut here, we're getting rid of the score marks. So that takes care of that one, okay? Then I'm gonna do this big flap, cutting the score line away from the big flap, and then the angle on the little one. I got kind of deep on that one. Not a big deal won't even be a problem. All right here, we can cut this guy completely off. So this little guy here, we're just gonna cut him completely off. We don't need him at all. So now let's go to the other end of the box. We're gonna do the same thing. We can get rid of this little guy here. We don't need him. And I'm taking my time here. You can do this faster when you're doing it at home. I just want y'all to see what I'm doing. Again, I'm cutting the score line off the big flap and then angle cutting the small flap. We'll cut the score line off the big flap and then angle cut the small flap. When I get done, I'm going to lay this down for you to see it. All right, we're going to cut the score line off of this flap. 
and angle cut a little flap. Now I'm going to angle cut both sides of this flap, and I forgot to do that on the bottom, so I'm going to go back and do that there real quick too. So let me angle cut this flap as well. All right, let's lay this down and look at it. All right, so here you see that we got rid of the little flap. We don't need it. We did our angle cuts here. We cut the score marks off of here nice and straight, and this one, okay, then and I angle cut both sides. Now let's look at the bottom, which looks exactly the same, okay? Now what I want you to do is on one end, it doesn't matter, this is a mirror image. I want you to glue some pieces down, and let me show you what pieces you're gonna glue down, okay? So your little closing flap right here and this piece, we're not going to glue this piece down. This is how you're going to know which one. The one closest to the little small flap does not get glued down. These three do. Now, let me tell you why we're gluing them down. When you go to close this box, you need the stability of these little flaps. So rather than lose them or edit my size of my paper in any way, I'm just going to cut, I'm just going to glue these down and use them to make my closure a little more rigid. So just gluing these guys down. And then this one, just like so. So that's all I have to do at the top is glue those three guys down. This is my closure for the box. Now I have to make one edit to it, all right? I need to cut it down. It's a little too long. So I wanna cut half of an inch off of it. So I'm just gonna put it into my trimmer at the half an inch mark, just like so, and nip that off. I do not need all of that length. I just need that much to hold that in. That's why I told you there was a little bit of editing we had to do, but it wasn't terrible. Okay, another thing I want to do is use my angle punch. Now, you can use your corner rounder as well. You don't have to use your angle punch. Now, what you'll do is you'll close this down so that you can get to your little corners. And I'm going to, using the large angle, I'm going to angle punch that little bit. And I'm also going to come back on this side and angle punch this little bit. Now, the reason for this is because I want to be able to slide this into the rigid top closing easier and getting a little bit of that point off the edges helps me. All right, so let's look at that one more time. Glue down, angle cut, half inch cut off, we're good. Now at the bottom, it's just assembling a box. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna close this guy over and this is where our little half inch flap for closing is. Okay, so we're gonna add glue to that half inch flap and then we're gonna bring this over just like so and line that up. And it, if you did all that careful scoring, Everything will line up real well for you right there. Now you will wanna make sure you get your edges glued down real good. I noticed this one's lifting a little bit. So I'm gonna get in there and put a little more glue in just to make sure that stays down real good. It's probably gonna leak out because of the way I did that, but I'll just wipe it away. But I wanna make sure that's glued down really good at the seam. All right, and then we can close the bottom of the box. So what I do is I send my two side flaps in like so and I apply glue to my side flaps, both of them, okay? And then I turn, my seam is here, right? I turn this piece in, stand this up on my work surface, grab my ruler, and we're gonna press that down with our ruler. So I press one flap down, press the other flap down, and that will get it closed. All right, now what I'm gonna do is put glue on this flap, Close it up, stand it up, and do the same thing. Take my ruler in, smash it down. So basically all we had to do to get started was build this rectangular shape box, okay? So that is the beginning. I can put my glue away now because I don't need glue to close this guy up. All right, so now what you're gonna do, you have these double glued pieces here. Remember we, fold those, we folded those down and glued them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push your sides in and you can start with just one, and just kind of work this in till you get to the middle. And what I do is I just kind of push those edges together right there and then squeeze that down, okay? And that gets me that. And if it's not perfect, you can play with it or whatever. I didn't see any reason to score that. You just do that, okay? Then on this side, you do the same thing. So push your edges together here and then crease that down. So you see how we did that? We're just pushing those in. This side did better for me than this side, but it's no big deal. Okay. Now, I just kind of run my fingers down the side to get that fold kind of started. See that? It doesn't have to be perfect. And now, all you're going to do is you're going to tuck this top flap in 
as you close the side. So you have to kind of use your fingers to help. See how I'm closing it and pushing it in? Isn't that cool how that does? And then look, this is totally the cereal box hack. I think that is so funny. So now here's what I was thinking. You know, Father's Day's coming up this month and I bet your dad likes some kind of sweet treat that you make. And wouldn't this be a cool way to give him some sweet treats in this box? Or to use it for anything you might want to put inside, a handmade gift, anything. It's a good size box. So let me show you how to decorate it, which I love this too. So this is four inches wide like a card. So check this out. So I'm digging into a sticker sheet again, and I'm going to treat this just like I did my cards recently that I did the as many of. And watch this. I made for myself a thank you strip, just like this was a card. And I want it to go across like so. And I'm going to put these flowers behind it on the top just like that. And then we'll put some more, some more behind it on the bottom. I think these little guys come in underneath here. And I don't want that to go all the way underneath. I'll show you why. I'm going to add another strip here too. All right. So what I want to do is I have some strips of paper. I got to decide what color I want to use. Let's bring this over and see. You might recognize these if you saw my other video. I kind of like the yellow. I kind of like the pink. Let's see what the purple looks like. Hmm. Let's go with the pink. The question is, do I want to do light pink or dark pink? Let's see. I think I like the, hmm, let's do the light pink. Hmm, all that to go back to the first one, right? Okay, what I want to do here is I'm going to glue this down centered on this thank you piece, okay? So I'm going to run some glue here. And I want to leave a little bit hanging at the bottom because I want to stamp another sentiment there. So rather than have to deal with a little tiny strip, I'm going to center that. I'm going to use my cutting mat to help me get it pretty centered and fairly even. Don't overthink it. I tend to do that. All right, and then I'm going to stamp another little sentiment down there. And this one says, you're my hero. I thought it'd be cute if someone had done something nice for you recently and you wanted to give them a little treat. And I'm going to put you're my hero right here to the side. Like so. Too cute. Then this is going to go across like this. Isn't this cute? I'm going to do it about like that so that my little piece stays on, but I can cut those little edges off. And I thought about, let me see how this looks. I thought this might be cute laying underneath that. Oh yeah, love that. Okay, so that's what we'll do. So let me, I'm going to move this up a little bit from where I actually want it to live, which is something like that. Then I'm going to place this on that same angle here. Ooh, shaking. Oh, I don't want that much to hang off because I don't want to waste that much of it. So let me fix that. About like that. Now I can trim this off. You could run this all the way around if you wanted to, but I'm going to trim it off because I want to use it on other projects. There we go. So now I have that little line and I have a bunch of that sticker left. Now, what I do with these, if you're if you're not familiar, I just put these right back. So I didn't use this. I'm just going to put it right back on my sticker sheet. By the way, if you're wondering where these stickers came from, this is from the summer market set from Cartabella. It's gorgeous. All right, now what I want to do is get a little foam tape. Now, you don't have to do foam tape. It is a treat box. Somebody probably wouldn't save, but I think this will be cute if we pop this up. And because I'm putting it on this little treat bag that's going to get moved around or put in my car or carried around, I'm going to add some glue to the foam. And then I'm just going to lay this on top of here. Oops, I don't want to cover that much of my flower at the top. Hold on. Let me move that down just a little bit. Something like that. And then I can trim off these edges. Also, if you don't have scissors that'll get there very easily, you can use an X-Acto right there. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a bow. It doesn't need a bow because it'll stay closed all by itself. And I have so many ideas for this box. Just wait till you see. But I am going to add a, a bow. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little glue and along this right in the middle of that line of dots, I'm using that to help me line it up. I'm going to run my glue like that. And I'm just going to take some ribbon and glue it into there. Again, this is it does not need a closure. So we really can put any decorations we want on this side. So I'm just going to put that right like so. Perfect. And then when I turn it around, I can tie a bow at the top and it'll stay at the top, but it's just for looks. I always give myself too much ribbon. 
but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than not enough. So then see, I have a little bow at the top, even though it's not really holding anything closed, it's just for cute. And I have this little box. Isn't this adorable? I love this. Now, I have got a million and a half ideas for this. So you're going to see this a lot because I think you're really going to like some of my Father's Day's Father's Day ideas I have coming up with this guy because there's a whole bunch we can do, but I wanted to teach you the basics first, okay? So I am going to bring this to you in six by six if I can do it and eight and a half by 11 if I can do it. Six by six may be too tiny, but I want to try it. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss those. Tell me what you think. Did you see the cereal hack too? Have you done all the boxes in your cabinet? Because I totally did already. It's so cool. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you make one of these, I 100% want to see it on my customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. I love seeing when you guys um, recreate these kinds of things and I really want to see your cereal box hack turn treat box. Thanks so much for watching guys. Talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.